Weatherly Stroll is an artist who grew up in Michigan and always had dogs, cats, and horses in her life. After a stint in Colorado, she returned to the Metro Detroit area and now focuses her work on capturing animals on canvas. I'm an oil painter. Most of my work is oil on canvas. My great-great-uncle, Gary Melchers, was an American Impressionist painter, and he has some work at the DIA. We had some of his posters around our house and books about him, and there's a museum in Virginia where his studio and home was, so my mom and I took a visit to that when I was, I think, 10. On my mom's side, my mom is also an artist. She does sculpture and graphite pencil drawings. I had dabbled in painting my whole life and done a lot of landscape paintings and when I finally committed to making art my career and painting full time, I was painting landscapes and a friend of mine asked me to do a portrait of their yellow lab that had just passed away. And I had never attempted anything like that, so I, but I said, sure, I'll try it. And so I did the portrait of Georgia, their dog, and then kind of one thing led to another and word of mouth got around and I found my own little niche of painting animals. And it's, it's nice because it's something I've always loved. I grew up with dogs and horses and cats and so it's a fun way to capture them and commemorate them. Well, I grew up in Metamora, so I grew up in the country and with horses and dogs, and I grew up riding horses, and so they've always been a part of my life, and I just think they're such majestic animals and such character, and a lot of my paintings have been based off of that, you know, just my, the love of the animal themselves, and each one is such an individual. I did a project for the White Horse Inn recently, which just reopened last year. It's 24 by 24 inches, and it's a, a portrait, a, a painting of a white horse, and it was a horse that I saw at a horse show recently and took some photographs of. So it's, it's a very stark composition with a dark background and the gray horse and some really beautiful morning light. It's backlit, so it's a painting that I started earlier in the year and have kind of set it aside for a while, and now I'm revisiting it. It's been a fun way to tie in what I love to where I grew up and moving back to Detroit, it's been fun to reconnect with the community here and I feel like there's a really strong community that has really helped me and my business get going. In an ideal situation, I get to meet the client and the animal that I'll be painting and take photographs and discuss what the client's interested in. And then going from there, it's editing the photograph that I work from it makes a, lot, a big difference to meet the animal also and get an idea of their personalities. And then I'll sketch the animal's image on, just with pencil on the, on the canvas. And then usually I will work kind of throughout the whole canvas and go back to different parts and build up layers of paint. With oil paints, they, they take a little bit longer to dry than acrylics. And so you have more freedom to go back and work into them without them drying too quickly. That being said, it's nice once they have dried to go back and add more layers of paint that show through. Sometimes it's just a trial and error, depending on, especially with dogs and the way that their hair falls and their markings, it, you know, you just kind of have to experiment sometimes and figure out what can capture that. I have a photography background in, from high school and college, and so I'm, I think in my own work that I and doing just for my personal work. I'm drawn to more stronger compositions. I'm looking for different angles, kind of unique perspectives. And with my traditional portraits, it kind of depends on what the client is looking for. Whether it's a large portrait, they want the full body or a smaller one of just their head and neck and shoulders. I think sometimes in photographs, you lose a little bit of the emotional connection. And I think with paint, I try to capture that in my portraits and capture more of their individual expressions and character. Probably one of the most challenging parts of the painting is making sure that their eyes are lifelike and, and have that spirit within them. If the eyes are dead to the viewer, then the painting doesn't work at all. I got involved with the Humane Society when I moved back to Michigan about four years ago and I was involved with the Bow Wow Brunch, their main fundraiser. And 
I enjoyed that, but I, I felt like there was something more that I could be doing with my art. And so I've decided to donate a portion of my proceeds every year to the Humane Society. And this year I'm developing a, a project for Art Prize in Grand Rapids based on the Humane Society's homeless animal population. And so the finished piece will be about five feet by 15 feet long. And it will include 300 different animals, dogs, cats, bunnies, birds, chickens, the kind of the plethora of animals that the Humane Society has at their different locations. It's hopefully going to help generate awareness of the sheer numbers of homeless animals that need adoption. I like to do a variety of things and so uh, besides the animals I also paint landscapes and I think we live in such a beautiful state that when I travel around the state I try to capture moments and come back to my studio and, and paint those moments. I was in Isle Royale last year and it's such a beautiful, beautiful place so I was able to capture some of those spots that we visited and uh, now I'm trying to paint them. I sell paintings all over the country, but it has been great to be connected here. And just, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities here that I might not have had had I stayed in Colorado. I'm such an animal lover, so I hope that that comes across in my work. And I hope that people just get in sheer enjoyment from it. And, you know, I, I have always loved art and I love looking at different paintings. And I hope my work conveys that to people also, that they just hopefully enjoy what I do. Check out that polar bear right behind me, y'all. You can learn more about Rutherly Stroll and all the artists featured here today on DetroitPerforms.org.